The final piece we'll talk about in multiple choice formatting is formatting the layout of the answer choices. So if I come up to the top and I click the preview question, I can see how this question is going to appear to students. It'll give them the question and then the four answer choices in a single column. If I click back to edit question, I have some formatting and I'll be honest, I overlooked this for a long time until I saw it in a webinar. So with the layout down here, you change the layout of your answer choices. So you have the block option, which is going to put them in a block, um, which sounds kind of obvious, but basically it makes it so this whole area around the answer choice is clickable. This makes it a lot easier for students who are on mobile devices like tablets or phones because there's a bigger space. They're not just trying to hit that one little dot. They have the whole space around the answer choice to select it. And then the other option is the radio button under the option. So instead of the little button appearing to the left-hand side, it will appear under the answer choice. This might be good if you're using pictures. Um, so if I had inserted images for each of these, and remember you have that image button in the rich text editor, then um, I can put the button underneath. I'm gonna go back to block because I really feel like this is probably the best one, especially since we don't have um, unified devices that our students are using. The other piece of um, formatting for answer choices is that you can adjust the number of columns. So if, for example, I want to make it look like a star assessment question or really most standardized assessment questions, I can change the number of columns to two and now I have my A, B, C, and D. And when I go to preview this, see, you'll notice that this whole space a student could click on in order to get select that as their answer choice. Again, great for students on mobile devices like tablets and phones. I can also do it in four columns if I have four answer choices, and I can almost make it more like a Likert scale. I could do almost more like a Likert scale. If I wanted to set it up like this, I could do questions similar to that, like strongly agree to strongly disagree if I wanted to get some data like that. Um, rather than doing kind of right and wrong answers, I could pull that. So you kind of see some different options when you just look at these two pieces, the layout and the number of columns that adjust the student's view of the answer choices for your multiple choice question. Hopefully you learned something new as we talked through some of those multiple choice formatting options. In just a minute, you'll have a second to take some time and reflect and respond to others about what you noticed while learning about multiple choice question formatting options. Thanks for joining and be stay tuned for the next section.